What's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology and finally sun has entered the zodiac sign of Aries and the new year begins wish all of you a very 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 happy new year whichever part of the globe you are whichever culture whichever tradition you are may this new year bring lots and lots and lots and loads of unlimited success and may we go one year close to god as we were from the last year okay there you go today we are going to discuss on this new year what is the ultimate purpose of astrology or what's the ultimate purpose of this channel and why are we discussing all these things all right so there you go if you're new to the channel and you have still not subscribed in the last year then please till the time this new year <laughs> comes or it has already started please subscribe and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and before I begin, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will also be there in this new year. In the last year, he was also there. And in the coming days also of this new year, he will always be there with you. All right. And I would like to wish uh, and thank all the 4,000 subscribers which have who have subscribed to my channel. I'm very happy that I've reached 4,000 subscribers now. Maybe many more in the future. All right. So very 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 thanks lots of thanks to each and every one of you who have subscribed to my channel keep subscribing keep watching and keep bringing your friends family and colleagues i know so many people have been telling me that oh i have been sending your videos to my friends my colleagues so i was very happy to hear that okay so now let's start with the topic what is the ultimate purpose of astrology why do you think parashar muni wrote all these things now what do you think what was going on in his mind oh let me help people who is going to get a neck who is going to get a job when or who is going to get married yes where is the girl going to come from many times i do consultations then people ask me oh will will the girl who i marry will she be from my own religion or my caste or will she be from a foreign culture foreign religion and then many times women are asking me oh will my husband be rich will he be handsome yes will he be tall will he be this will he be that yes many people are asking that oh can you tell using astrology that what kind of a daughter-in-law will I get? Bahu kaisi milegi? Will she serve our family properly? Us? Will she serve us in our old age? Or will she throw us, desert us in our old age? And our son will be dominated and controlled by his wife. So can you please tell us what is going to happen? And then there are people who are concerned. Oh, which stream my son, my daughter should choose? Should, should he or she choose engineering or medicine or medical? which stream yes or should he or she choose commerce or should he or she become an IS officer yes all these things are there so what do you think is the ultimate purpose well it is very good that we are using the divine science the divine knowledge of the Vedas the scriptures and especially astrology no because astrology is what basically it is a way to understand ourselves right but unfortunately in the last 5000 years as the science has been manipulated and the science has been deviated very much from its ultimate uh, due course of action so because of that lot of uh, misconceptions have come pertaining to this knowledge which means first of all astrology is not only should i repeat it is not only meant for our materialistic pursuits which means that we can see when we might we might get married or what kind of a person we may end up with or we might be able to see uh, when we are getting a next job or when we can have a promotion that's fine there's no problem with that but the problem is that's not the only reason why it is meant the main reason the ultimate purpose of astrology is to see how we can best spiritually connect to god yes which means how what kind of spiritual practice is uh, supported in the chart which does not mean that you cannot do other spiritual practices but at least at this point of time where i am yes what kind of uh, practices can i do what kind of uh, what kind of practices should i do which is compatible with my own nature which is compatible with my uh, with my current swabhava as they say yes in sanskrit swabhav so that is very important so especially if uh, we have 
as uh, James Bahasar said in his videos recently which he had done last two weeks back so if you have not watched his videos then please go back and watch so James Bahasar had said that if uh, <coughs> moon is having connection to Saturn yes because moon is the mind and Saturn represents those things which are in isolation which are in seclusion so then these people can do very good in meditation or doing things alone like yoga and etc and all these things yes but if moon is connected to jupiter he said bhakti yoga is very much required for the person they, 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 they can do very well in that area because then uh, jupiter represents what jupiter represents many things actually but jupiter gets exalted in the sign of cancer as we all know it gets ucha in karkarashi so when jupiter is connected to moon it means that uh, moon uh, needs more emotions when we uh, get uh, get into some spiritual practice yes and that can be true with anything of this world also but especially with pertaining to spirituality because jupiter's exaltation sign is the sign of moon itself and then when uh, mercury is associated with the moon then uh, reading the knowledge of the scriptures gyan yoga all these things as james brasser said the truth shall set you free means knowledge yes so then uh, that can be a very good alternative so now it doesn't mean that anybody who has a uh, moon or jupiter together will go towards bhakti yoga which means in uh, trying to connect to god through emotions yes the nine processes of uh, devotional service as the shrimad bhagavatam says uh, which pralad maharaj says in the seventh canto i guess yes so shravanam kish shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam dasyam sakyam and those nine processes are there about which i will discuss in the near future but what i'm saying is you also have to see other positions yes so now i will not go into the details and descriptions of what every placement indicates to because that is a very long video and it can't be made in uh, 10 15 20 minutes and i will be making more videos on that and we can also see which planets are prominent in our chart yes so sometimes it can happen that moon and saturn are both linked with uh, so, sorry jupiter and saturn are both linked with moon yes it can happen so then as james brasser said that we need to take uh, that which is more strongly connected which means suppose your moon is at 20 degrees and your saturn is at 15 degrees and your jupiter is in 19 degrees so which means jupiter's aspect to the moon is more closer than the aspect of saturn so then the qualities of jupiter which affects the moon will be more prominent yes so you might uh, not understand what i'm saying yes so you have to go and watch james brasser's videos so i think it is there in the first or the second part i'm not very sure which whichever part it is please go and check it so you will understand it much more better there so that means and then we also have to see which planets are there in the fifth house which planets are there in the ninth house so for example if somebody has jupiter associated with the fifth house the person can connect to lord shiva very well and if mercury is associated with the fifth house then the person can connect to vishnu very well because mercury signifies vishnu in the fifth house all right and then if sun mercury are associated with the fifth house then people can connect to the vishnu avatar of mercury which is connected to the solar dynasty because sun represents the uh, the solar dynasty which is what who is lord ram himself and if moon and mercury are placed then it is the uh, avatar of the chandravamsha yes? so the lunar dynasty which is lord krishna himself so if moon and mercury associate with the fifth house then you can suggest them that you can go and worship lord krishna yes then especially if uh, rahu is associating with the fifth house then we can uh, so then you will find that they say we we connect to goddess durga or goddess kali very well yes especially kali i have seen then if ganesh associates with the fifth house then uh, sorry if ketu associates then you will always see ganesh ji's flavor is there especially in maharashtra <laughs> because ketu doesn't have the head ketu is the headless planet and uh what does ganesh ji represent ganesh ji also did not have a head at one point one point of time and then when ganesh ji got that head everything became perfect yes and who gave that head it was lord vishnu who had uh, arranged for that thing uh, that uh, this elephant's head to be put so that shows that whenever we get a guru our ketu will naturally improve and whenever we try to take lessons from the guru and follow the words of the scriptures that can be very good and then i also made a video on moksha and spirituality moksha and astrology i guess so that was the name of the video so you can watch that also in that i said that 
why mercury venus are always near to the sun and what the sun represents what mercury venus represents in the context of moksha yes so if you have not watched that video please go and watch it moksha and astrology that's the name of the video i guess so and then you have to see which planets are situated in the ninth house so suppose you have venus situated in the ninth house then it can always happen that you can improve have improvements in your spiritual life in your overall spiritual well-being after you get married now if venus is in a bad shape there which means suppose if you're a capricorn ascendant and venus is debilitated because for capricorn virgo is the ninth house yes so venus gets debilitated where so venus is also the yoka so then it can happen that your spiritual practice may take off after some time of the marriage but because venus is there in the ninth house it will still improve your relationship with god so that will happen if jupiter is in the ninth house then going to a guru learning from jupiter in the ninth house these people must have a guru it will not help you by reading books or by seeing videos in youtube it is not going to help you you must go to a guru i know all the jupiter in the ninth house people and that's a very good placement jupiter in the ninth or the lagna especially fifth house also fabulous yes and then if um, yeah there are so many things i can go on and on saying so the point here is i want to say is not about oh this planet is here then what will happen that planet is there what will happen that's not the purpose of this video to go into the details of the astrological placements but the purpose of this video is to tell us how to harmona how to see the chart in a harmony just because you have jupiter in the fifth it doesn't mean that you will be a worshiper of shiva i know now somebody will write in the comments oh i have moon mercury in the fifth house i am not a krishna worshiper yes i have sun mercury in the fifth i am not interested in lord ram well well that is because there are other combinations in your chart or you may say oh my jupiter uh, sorry my moon and saturn are conjunct but i am not interested in hatha yoga but that is happening because the other planets are not speaking in that same direction yes so whenever you go and approach an astrologer for a consultation this is the first 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 the number one thing you should do the first thing you should do is instead of asking all these things which people ask oh why was i born uh, wh what is my destiny those things you can ask those are also very important because that is also a purpose of astrology that is important but the first question the most important thing you should be asking is which spiritual practice is best suited for me because then the astrologer can see the whole chart and then the astrologer can suggest you okay your sun is being aspected by this planet your moon is being aspected by this planet but then here he has to see uh, which is more prominent in the chart suppose sun is not in the kendra or in the trikona and suppose moon is in the kendra or trikona and if moon is been aspected by jupiter then the aspect of bhakti yoga will be more prominent in the person even though saturn may aspect sun yes so but if what if uh, saturn is uh, what if sun is in the kendra and sun is been aspected by jupiter but moon is been aspected by saturn and moon is somewhere else. so you have to see the whole chart then planets in the fifth house and planets in the ninth house yes especially if you have venus connected with the fifth or ninth it is very 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 important that you try to meditate on the form of god because what venus is actually venus represents form right that is why uh, venus represents love romance you will always see till the time the photo of the person who you love is there in your mind you will still love the person the moment that photo disappears slowly gradually if you have had a breakup or a divorce you will realize that you don't love that person anymore yes or maybe you don't love the person as much as you used to love yes so if venus associates with the fifth or ninth then it is very essential for example if venus is in the fifth house then you can always 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 when you are doing some mantra that's known as tratak chanting tratak means my one of my gurus used to say this is known as trataka chanting tratak means you have the mantra written in the paper so suppose you are chanting uh, any mantra suppose om namo bhagavate vasudevaya then make sure you take a print out of that mantra and put it in front of you if venus is in your fifth house that is how you can best connect to god yes if venus is in your ninth house then also when you go to the guru when you go to temple uh, take darshan of the deities very properly you should take darshan of the deities for a long time because when venus associates with the trines photos and pictures affect us a lot should i repeat when venus associates with the trines or sun and moon especially photos have the power to impact us very strongly and more prominently i have seen if venus associates with the fifth house because fifth house shows what we love so photos yes lord krishna's beautiful photos like i have in my room 
Hanumanji's photo is there. Do you see that? Photo? Oh, it's going this side. <laughs> and then I have photos of nursing there. Then Balaji is there. So many photos are there. You can see in my room. So these things are there. Yes. And then so many other things you can do. Yes, you can write the mantras. Whichever mantra you are uh, uh, you are liking or whichever mantra you are chanting, you can do that. Yes. And if Mercury is very strong in your chart, make sure you read the scriptures. Yes. You should be quoting shlokas like missiles. Yes. Whenever you uh, think of the Bhagavatam, the first canto, the first chapter, the first shloka should always be there in your mouth. Janma adhyasya yaton vaya aditaratas chartheshu bhigya swarar. Yes. Whenever you think of the Brahma Samhita, it should always come. Brahma Samhita is so wonderful. I'll be uh, starting the Brahma Samhita very soon. But... Here I would like to sing uh, two or three shlokas. Yes, Venum Konanta Maravinda Dalaya Takcham Balahavatam Samasitam Budasunda Rangam Lakshmi Sahastra Satasambra Masevya Manam Govinda Madi Purusham Damaham Bajami Asya Sada Sakalendri Avriti Manti. I can go on and on. Brahma Samhita is very long. <laughs> and this video will go to 45 minutes, but I will not do that in due to the interest of time. So and then when Mercury is very strong in your chart, read the scriptures. Yes, take out the Gita and read it. Every shloka you read it. By that you can connect to God very well because Mercury shows intelligence. If Jupiter is in Kendra or in the first or the fifth or the ninth, irrespective of whichever tradition you are, always make sure you maintain contact with the Guru. Keep calling him or her every 15 days, every 7 days. Go and keep calling the person. Guruji, how are you? Guru Maharaj, this is my problem. Guru Maharaj, that is happening. Yes. So when Jupiter is strongly associated with our chart, yes, if it is aspecting or conjunct the moon or in trines from the moon also, then it is very important that we uh, take care of our relationship with the Guru, yes. And especially if there are malefics like Rahu, then it is more the essential, if, if Rahu is in trines especially, yes, first, fifth or ninth, then it is highly essential that we inculcate uh, daily spiritual practices to our life because uh, that means because if you don't do that then Rahu is the significator of doubts and deceit, dissolution. Yes, um, it can happen. Many people I have seen Rahu in trines. Oh, they will see some video on YouTube about some God or some spirituality and then they will start developing their own notions what is right, what is wrong. So instead of that we should move towards what Jupiter represents. Yes, we should go and meet a Guru and then from them take guidance. So all these things are there. So there are so many things which I can go on and on saying. Yes, and Bhakti Yoga is there, there is Hatha Yoga, then suppose sun is very strong, then chanting the Gayatri Mantra is fabulous, yes. So these are some hints which I have given and now you may be asking me, oh my uh, Mars is in this house, my Saturn is in that house, my Rahu is here, my sun is here, what should I do? Well, uh, I cannot say what you should do, that I can only say when uh, I see your whole chart, yes. And then there are other divisional charts, the Siddhamsha is very important because that shows our education yes and if mercury is very strong then we can see from the siddhamsha what kind of things will be good for you to study so and then we also have the divisional chart called navamsha in that there are things pertaining to marriage which we see yes which ashram you should choose should you remain a celibate or should you get married yes those things are there because not everybody should marry not everybody should remain a celibate because i have seen that some people if they're destined to marry even if they don't want they will end up marrying and if some people are destined to stay single even if they want to marry they will never get married or their relationships may not work yes so we have to see the whole chart we have to see all that the, that's a very detailed process yes so that is what i wanted to say that is the first thing ideally we should be asking yes when we go to an astrologer well now uh, that is somebody said in a comment that Oh, I made a video on who should not study astrology and then there was one person who said that oh if uh, who the hell are you to tell who should study astrology or not so I'm again giving the disclaimer here I am not telling you that go and ask the astrologer what spiritual practice is good for me so I am not telling that but this is just my viewpoint which I am sharing with you people so whoever wants uh, spiritual progress and whoever is interested in going towards God uh, then we uh, then i i feel that we need to ask these questions yes because when you are going to get married that anyways will happen either you want it or you don't yes <laughs> either the astrologer's prediction is correct or it's false you will only get married the day you are destined to get married that same moment you will get married so 
it is not of much great benefit for us in knowing the date of marriage yes now i am not saying that uh, don't go and ask the date of marriage yes if we are desperately searching then it's great to know that this this times you can get married or some problems in career we can always use astrology for our mundane life for our materialistic benefits there is no problem yes chanting mantras of kuber or lakshmi devi for well that is also fine but the most important thing is which spiritual practice is good for me what kind of a community i should connect to what are the things that i should do yes the whole chart is to be seen and for that we need to watch the james bras videos and my videos so many videos i have in my channel yes on the bhagavad gita and spirituality and moksha and astrology so in that you will see about sun mercury venus and all these things and most importantly even if we cannot figure out from our astrological chart then we can see what what uh, what are the things that easily we connect to yes so for some people especially hearing is very important yes especially if the nakshatra of shravan is connected yes suppose you have a prominent planet in shravan nakshatra and it is well placed which means it is unafflicted yes so then it is highly essential that we hear the lectures of our gurus yes we can always go and attend festivals yes if dhanishta is there then we can always go and attend groups gathering celebrations if uttar falgun is there if purva falgun is associated yes and then if hasta nakshatra is associated then we can always learn to play the mridangam learn to play the kartal learn to play musical instruments all those things are there if chitra is associated we can learn to maybe we can draw paintings of god yes my god beautiful it is draw a painting of lord krishna he is standing in the tribhanga lalitam threefold bending form so draw a picture of hanuman ji as it is there here yes going to the lanka yes and burning of the lanka make that photo make it beautiful wonderful amazing it is all right so there you go i can go on speaking again and again but as i said i will give the last reminder here the purpose of this video is not to go into details of astrological conjunctions and planets that can only be done when i see the whole chart all right but this is to create this awareness that what kind of spiritual practice will be good for me now now that does not mean that whatever the astrologer is telling only that you can do it doesn't mean that but uh, you should uh, ask the astrologer whenever you are taking consultation that whichever uh, whichever practice will be good for me it may not be best suited because sometimes it becomes difficult to see which will be there exactly but at least in my experience i have seen it is quite possible to give a overall understanding of which could be good and which are the areas we need to avoid yes so and as i said if sun or uh, sun is very strong then chanting the gayatri mantra doing surya namaskar all these things are very important yes that's all i can go on and on saying but i have to stop here okay it's a long video all right so until next time wish you good luck bye bye happy new year and thank you for subscribing to my channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe and if you want a consultation then approach me through my website the link is there in the description below okay and before i leave as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him in your horoscope and he will also know how to go to god okay until next time wish you good luck bye bye see you